That was odd. Um, welcome to the March 19th, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python user group meeting. I think we're recording, um, but I didn't hear an announcement that re recording was being done, but we are recording. Um, topics today, we've got a bunch of status updates. I uh, want to talk about 012 um, as well. A uh, few other topics um, uh, that I highlighted from the issues list. Um, that have recently been opened. So I wanted to touch on those. And then any other open discussion people have, any other um, issues they want to bring up. Um, this is a Linux Foundation Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the uh, Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Let's follow that. That is why the, the announcement didn't come up. We were already recording, so everyone's already heard an announcement that we are recording. So we're all aware of it. That's good. Um, let me change to edit mode. And um, let's get into the, uh, any announcements, any introductions, anyone, uh, any topics to be added to the, uh, to the agenda that people would like to do. If anyone wants to step up to the mic for any reason, please do so. Right, everyone's quiet today. Um, status updates. There's a pile of things, as always, going on in um, being added to Akapai. I know um, uh, I don't see Jamie here, but a non-creds RS in Akapai. Um, we're getting down to the final pieces of that, notably that um, uh, Jamie has enabled um, and on creds and credx, the two implementations of an on creds to be available in an Akapai instance at the same time. And the second part that he's just added and put in a PR for is allowing a tenant to upgrade their tenant to use an on creds RS rather than credx. So even though the overall Akapai instance might be configured to run um, the straight ASCAR wallet, a, um, an endpoint is being added so that a tenant can upgrade their tenant to use the non creds uh, or ask our non creds wallet type, which both um, does minor updates to the data in the wallet. So upgrading various things um, to do with um, ongoing uh, exchange um, protocols that are running. Um, but more importantly, changes the um, endpoints being used for issuing an on-creds and verifying them. So processing an on-creds credentials. So that's the big change that will happen. And so by doing this um, enabling of the tenant upgrade, um, that can happen at the pace of the of the controller, the business logic, they can decide when they want to upgrade. Obviously, we'll push that upgrade more and, and deprecate the older um endpoints but but for now um for this upcoming releases they they will be able to do it at their own pace um Steven, any up uh, yeah both of those things that you just talked about are still in prs yes yes yeah so they'll the the first one uh supporting for a non credit and ask concurrently that pr is actually ready to go but uh yeah. it's waiting for the after the 012 release yeah, and then the the upgrade, the actual upgrade script is the one that's still uh, he's still working on. Yeah, he just put in the PR, the draft PR yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, did Peer and AFJ interop? Um, Daniel, I know you've been fighting some battles with that. Do you want to give us an update on where that is? I think we're almost finished it. We have reuse on did peer two and four um, connection reuse. So that's completed. Go ahead, Daniel. Right. Um, so the current state of that PR that we have open for the AFJ uh, slash credo interrupt with, with Akapai, um, 
I think we've worked through what we need to do now um, in terms of we just need to support both 1.0 and 1.1. Yeah. Um, and there's there's some specifics that I've explored on that front and how we respond in kind to out of band invitations and and requests. Um, uh, there's a number of messages that are in there going back and forth with uh, you and um, also Ariel from the credo side of things. Um, uh, so we're to a point basically where I just need to have the time to sit down and complete the implementation. Um, and I just haven't gotten around to that quite yet. Um, it does need to be soon. Um, I, I certainly feel urgency in making sure that gets taken care of so we can get it into this release. And so we're not delaying the release with that as well. Um, but yeah, it's a, it just needs a little bit more time. Okay. And the respond in kind, are you taking care of that or do we need someone else to look at that? Or is, uh, I will be doing that as part of the, uh, as part of the implementation. Yeah. Okay. Cause I think Ian, you looked at that for a bit. I started to look at that yesterday, but then I got pulled off on other stuff. So okay, I so haven't Daniel's got this one then. Wrong. Okay. Okay. There you go. Nice. Did rotation is merged, correct? That is correct, yep. Okay, good. And this is merged, so both of these can come off the list. I should have taken them off already. But did rotation, um, for those wondering, is complete. And that's done. Um, good. We'll look at the other issues in a moment. Actually, let's take a look at the issues um, now because we, we want to talk about 012 um, and getting it completed. Um, whoops. So if we look at pull requests, don't know why this one's failing. Um, this is just a, a, a tweak to the demo script, so I don't know why it's failing. Um, this is obviously one of those ones where we're getting... Um, unnecessary failures in the integration tests. Um, Jamie put a note out, out about it today that he's gonna take a look at it um, and and see where that is. But um, yeah, I was surprised that um, I couldn't run the demo on Apple M1 until I tweaked it a bit. Is that just nobody has one on our core team? I usually use Linux, so I, um, just happened to try it on this because I'd recently installed Docker on my lap, uh, M1 laptop. I've been thinking about getting one, but I decided that I couldn't justify a third Mac. <laughs> I've, I've had the issue, but I usually just um, update the Docker file for the dev container with that environment variable that you put in, and that usually okay. solves it. So, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, let's see that one, this one we've talked about, um, this one, Daniel looks like everyone's happy with it, but wanted a bit of docs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Um, okay. I, I'll, I'll also reference the, uh, the external, um, plugin demo basically that I put together, um, just for some added context and, and I'll include that in the doc, but yeah. Sounds Excellent. Good. good. Um, VCDI, we're, we won't be including that in 012. That's still coming. This is the uh, W3C and OnCred's work. Looks like it's going well and we're getting very close with it. Um, Golda, any comments you wanna make on progress being made? Yeah, yeah, so, some of it's in our repo into um, this one, so you're not seeing it as a fresh PR. Um, two things, I think Ian may speak to it. Uh, he was working closely with, with uh, Tuna yesterday. who's actually doing most of the coding um, we've overcome the issues uh, that we were having with the uh, re formatting for the uh, the Alice Faber demo where we weren't actually adjusting the format because we hadn't realized um, 
that some of it had to be done at the Python level, not in the Rust level, that we weren't just trying to trigger the Rust wrapper. So we were making those adjustments now. The other big thing I think is the learning is that um, DX usability improvements for for new developers. Um, I was talking to Ian about this yesterday that uh, you know a lot of guys on this project have been on it for a long time. And so you're really familiar with how it works. And we've been discovering um, you know, what is the confusion for new developers and what are the slowing points. So, so hopefully some of the stuff awesome. we're going to contribute as well is going to be uh, you know, speeding up iteration time on Alice Faber, we just pushed something on our side to have host path and so that there can be immediate updates, you know, if you're ch making changes in Alice Faber, you don't have to reload the whole Docker image and, and we have that for the unit tests. And then we're going to try to document some of the confusions that we had. So the next time that you guys add brand new developers, <laughs> it won't be quite this painful. Um, but no, we are going okay, through good. and we apologize for the delays um, and we, we'll have a new demo whenever you guys want to see it. Excellent. Okay. Good to hear and really appreciate the any guidance you can give us on on improving the ramp up time. We really want to see that. And and then um, also, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Daniel Blum, I, I see you're on the call. So if you want to ping me to get a time, um, we'd love to chat with you about the extensibility stuff. So yeah, that's it from our end. Okay. Um, this one is complete, ready to go. Ian is just waiting on reviews. Have we had enough reviews on this one? I I think it's good to go. Uh, this yeah, is the did here reuse. Yeah, uh, Keith. Sorry, Keith. Sorry, which one are we talking about? Uh, this <laughs> the is the reuse. reuse. Okay, yeah. So Keith had put some comments on it. There's one uh, change I was going to make. One fix. Okay. That... It's... Keith, it's a Keith. tiny one and then yeah, yeah it's good to go yeah okay so, good yeah, i was actually in the middle of doing it right now <laughs> i see that okay I'll... <laughs> akif you're uh you sound like a robot something's wrong with your sound oh is it maybe my headset is that's it really a little bad better. right now it's better oh, now I... your earlier comments were a little rough Oh no! I was just saying his, the change that I asked for was just the minor, okay. tiny one line change. Yeah, good, excellent. Okay, um, this is one that Jamie's working on. This is the one we talked earlier about Daniel, and um, these ones we're ignoring for now. But eventually, we need to look at these to decide what to do with them. Um, the rest are actively, um, you know, should be completed in the next perhaps before the next uh, meeting, and we will have another 012. Um, I'm thinking for completing 012, we need this one, 2748 and 2823 and 2835. Is that correct? Daniel, um, the most work is on your plate. Or, or do you agree those ones should be in 12? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, um, Patrick. I'm just wondering the the last one. Extract getting verification key for proof signing into verification key. Uh, what is this about? So this is one that's been open for a while. Um, I I've responded. Um, every time I open this PR, it makes me think about things. Um, and um, uh. I, I don't think the solution that's proposed here is necessarily the way to go um, in order to accomplish what was being desired here of being able to, uh, um, okay. let's see, I'm trying to remind myself even of what it, what it was yeah. supposed to do, but <clears throat> I haven't come up with a better solution yet. Um, mostly just haven't gotten around to it. Um, so it's just been a little so priority. But... Is this about, let's say it did could have multiple verification method and finding a way to find which one is used to sign the proof. Right, I believe so. So the, the verification key strategy was a pluggable, bleh, pluggable component that was added um, semi-recently in order to support getting uh, like from a did, finding the default verification key that you'll use for issuing credentials. And that was to support um, did methods that have been plugged into Akapai. Yeah. Um, so in, in a similar fashion, um, plugging did methods into Akapai. Um, it's also possible to plug in dids into Akapai that have multiple keys, even though yeah. the base Akapai support um, is a one-to-one. -one. There's only one key for, e for each did. 
Um, so I think this is along the same lines of uh, but just making it easier to have plugged in DIDs that have multiple keys associated with them. Yeah, that makes sense. I know with the the new endpoint, you can specify the verification method and the option. So you can put the literal verification method ID. Maybe that would solve this problem in like a different way. Like instead of being in the ACAPI code, you just arbitrarily give a verification method ID that you want to use. Um, yeah. Patrick, do you want to take a look at this one? And then yeah. what I would like is just you to um, pass a, this is a good way to go, or this is a bad way to go and post an issue. Would you be able to do that? Yeah, I can do this because th this speaks to like, especially with did web, right? When you can just put exactly. as many verification yeah. method. I was thinking right. like, if there could be a way to, you know, associate a did with a specific verification method ID, but it, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's complicated. Yeah. So uh, if you could just look at this one and as I say, keep going <laughs> or figure out what's needed. Now there's conflicts on it. So I, I imagine we're just going to lose it no matter what, but yeah. decide if there is a better way to do this is some of the work we've already done address this already or, or what do we do with this one? That's, uh, that's what we'd like to do to get rid of this one on the, on the list and get the right thing done. Yeah, I can have a look. Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, so we've got our list of additional PRs. I'll add them afterwards, but I know which ones they are. Um, I don't think there's any more concepts we wanna put in it. I think at this point, um, We'll just put the list of PRs we're waiting on. If anything comes up, we can decide if we want to merge them ahead of these ones. But if we can get those wrapped up, that would be good. And then we'll do a, a 12 um, RC3 briefly um, so that we can test it out and then go from there. Um, Patrick. Yeah, I just have like a quick little PR I'd like to get is just uh, for some reason on the dead the credential issuance endpoint, the VCAPI issuance endpoint, I forgot to include the verification method and the options. It, it got lost somehow. So I, I just want to re-add that option. Like okay. it, it was there in the test, but it's okay. required. Yeah. Okay. Um, excellent. And maybe I, I was going to ask at the end, but um, so... Daniel, you're probably gonna know what I mean. So the old JSON LD sign endpoint, the way it works is you would have your credential and then you would include a ver key outside of the credential, which would indicate which, which key you wanna sign the data and you could put an arbitrary issuer value. In the new endpoints, it actually takes the issuer value to find which key you wanna sign with. Um, which sounded like, uh, I think it, it's very great, but I think losing the ability to provide uh, in the options a very key which, which you want to sign uh, does add so, some benefit to include that. So I, I wanted to run the idea of adding a optional option, like proof key or something that would say like, if this is included, use this value to go fetch which key to sign instead of the issuer value. Um, the, the use case I would have for this, so let's say I register a did, I publish this did on an ND network, and I also want to publish the same public key on a did web, right? When I oh, create oh. a did, I can only create it once. Um, like the, the way to to do what I want without this would be to allow like uh, use an insecure did, you know, use a C yeah. when you create your did and create it twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, because the did is really just a label for that key pair. Yeah. So my yeah. idea was to have like a proof key optional option. If this is included, you would put either the, the very key or the, the did as the label it is saved in the wallet. So you could use like your did web issuer or your did in the issuer uh, that resolves to the same public key. 
that's an interesting one. My, my gut reaction is to say that it seems like it would be more useful for us to have explicit support for having the same did have yeah uh, be published in multiple locations as opposed to um reworking the vc api endpoint to um accept arbitrary key values uh to sign the credential with um, so with the concept of having like a did alias work so when you register did uh in your wallet you can also put an alias or like a different label for that did so i could put like I register a did, right? It's a did solve, and and I also add the did web version of that did I want. So regardless, if I use in my issuer field like did in the ta -na 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 -na, or did web ta -na 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 -na, it could fetch the same key. Right. Um, I, I think the also known as mechanism is probably one that we could explore for that. Um, I, we, we, we would need additional metadata on the dids that are stored to the wallet in order to make them, you know, um, yeah. retrievable by those, those AKA values. Um, yeah. Yeah. but it seems like a reasonable approach, especially since metadata is, um, well, it would have okay. to be searchable metadata. So, uh, and we'd want to have that be efficient. Um, I, I think there are, are definitely things we can explore there um, for sure. And okay. and we can discuss further on Discord if that would be Yeah, let, let's put it post 0 0.12, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, task there is for you to open an issue at least. Um, we're exploring some ideas, Patrick, and then we'll discuss through various forums, forums. Okay. All right. Um, status of, of 1.0, I think the only, the things we would add to 1.0 are the other things that are in work, which is, sorry. I have a, a dog here. Come on. Um, the additional things um, that we have are the non-creds in, in VCDI format and the uh, um, non-creds RS work. I think th those are the only other two things to go in the 1.0 release. Um, ideally, upgrades to documentation. Golda, your inputs on, um, on developer experience that type of polishing, but that that's where we are with, with 1.0. Yeah. Any other, anyone think there's other things to be added to 1.0? I think that sounds good enough. Okay. Um, certainly, you know, anything that comes along between now and then is would obviously be considered and 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 added if we're comfortable with it. But those are the conceptual big ones that we'd like to have in place. Okay. Should we? Um, I know that they sort of done that in the traceability group. That so when there's PRs or issue, they added a tag like post 1.0 or pre 1.0 yeah. to start to already make that those yeah. decisions. Uh, yeah. We've got good. those. Um, we've got some of those in there. Right. Um, this yeah, one yeah. actually is moved up, um, but I'll, I'll add those to the other ones that need to get to get that added. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Akapai traceability uh, test suite controller. I just threw this on, and Patrick, I'm glad you're here. But I was going to mention that. Um, so Patrick um, created and demonstrated um, a while ago a traceability test suite controller. Um, and we are now deploying that at BCGov. Just why don't you give a little bit of a summary on where you are with that deployment? Uh, yeah, so we call it the um, sort of the Akapai or it's more, I guess, of a traction tenants uh, controller. Uh, and the goal of this controller is to showcase the the VC API endpoints to issue JSON LD credentials with did web uh, that can interoperate with other uh, traceability 
specification implementation. So this accounts for signing JSON LD credential with a, a did web um, issuer value. Uh, they use the ED2259 uh, to 2020, 2018 algorithm. And it also includes, so the way they exchange credential is through post requests. So you would send a post request with the OAuth to bearer token to another implementation. So, you know, this that's how you would send your, your presentation. So it's a bit different uh, conceptually than what we are used to do. Uh, it's also a specification that's catered specifically for supply chain business cases. Uh, so of course there are some of these considerations that need to be reflected as to how things were done. Um, it's very different than other cases that at least I see uh, Akabai being used a lot when it relates more to identity and there's a lot more private information. This component will also enable uh, compatibility with the VC API specification in itself. Uh, so the traceability API is an extension of the VC API. Um, they just published, uh, just I, I read that this yeah. morning, I'll yeah. put it in the chat. So it's a new sort of dashboard. It's called Can I Credential? Uh, and it's just a new sort of visual representation of all um, implementation that can issue and verify verifiable credential. And they have multiple test suites, uh, the VC data model 2.0, EDDSA 2022, um, ED2259 signature 2020, the key method, all this. And this sort of API controller is the sort of back channel equivalent for these test suites. So whichever other test suite is interested in being demonstrated with using Akapai uh, could be sort of interface with that controller. So yeah. we are looking... Uh, this week to deploy an instance to the dev, pointing to the dev traction. Um, so we're looking just a standard. There's already Docker deployment, so the, the code is already available. You can deploy it. All you need is a traction tenant. Uh, you can deploy it with Docker. Uh, and we are looking to deploy an instance. In uh, We're working on some Kubernetes charts right now. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, eventually, we will yeah. move on to data model 2.0, uh, but that's a, a bigger conversation. Uh, on this. Uh, did I miss anything, uh, Steve? No, no, that covers it. And um, and ongoing deployment. So this will be um, so the repo is available that has the code that lets you run it in Docker adding Helm charts to that. And then what we're doing is deploying an instance of that that will continuously run at BC Gov and will allow for ongoing interoperability testing across the rest of the partners of the test. Uh, yeah, so Do you have the link to the traceability um, test suite? Andy? I, I, I will post it in the chat uh, as okay. we go on, but it's the same principle as ATH. Yeah. It's driven by GitHub Actions. Yeah. It runs yeah. at every 24 hours or 48 hours, I forget. Yeah. And uh, it makes sure that every uh, component can talk to one another. Oh, and also another thing I forgot to mention, there's also a status list 2021 uh, implementation in there, uh, which will move to bit string status list. So this is a way to manage uh, revocation or suspension, mm -hmm. cancellation, et cetera. So it's a great tool uh, to have. Uh, and yeah. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Oh. Or bit string status list. Yeah. yeah. Which is the yeah. cool. Okay. So that's um work going on at um, that we'll add and, and we'll definitely this um, can of VC. I don't know where they came up with the name, but anyway, I'm sure it means something deep and meaningful. Um, well, it means can I credential? <laughs> can I? <laughs> <VC>. Okay. 
though it doesn't mean anything deep and meaningful. Never mind. <laughs> um, it is a similar concept. So the only the difference between this and AATH, just so people know, is that AATH um, generates its own images of all of the participants on the fly, whereas um, these test suites require that the participants run their own um, uh, agents, basically. So instead of spinning up the agents as AATH does, creating the Docker images and then spinning up the agents to talk, these um, assume that the agents exist and are operating by the various participants and just orchestrate the test runs. So the orchestration is the same as AATH. The difference is the um, uh, how the tests, how the test agents are deployed. Um, th th since this is very similar, there's a decent chance we might look at um, add, adding on to that one as well. We'll just have to see. This only came up this morning um, as an announcement on the uh, W3C CCG list. Okay. Um, I did want to bring up a brief mention of Hyperledger mentorships that went in. So these are um, uh, projects that, that Hyperledger projects propose and that um, uh, mentees sign up for and, and agree to do if they, if, if they want to. So <clears throat> we propose to, in, in our area, um, Indie Read Replicas. Um, so the implementation of taking something like the um, web browser that's part of Vaughn Network or IndieScan and using it not just as a as a browser of, of an Indie network, but rather a, a component that, that could be deployed by an enterprise and serve transactions. Or, um, so that um, agents instead of agents would talk to the replica instead of talking directly to the network and the replica itself would just stay synchronized with the um, indie ledger as it got updated so that's one project and another one is a an on creds um, allosaur revocation manager implementation so those have both been proposed and we'll see how those go um issues to discuss so there's a few things that i know i tagged more than that so i'm not quite sure why it's just that um but there should be a few more shoot handling um out of order messages after a rotation this issue came up um so this has to do with caching <clears throat> so Right now we cache connections. And so that if a did rotate happens, we update the database, but there's still a cache that's being used. And so it might not be detected that the cache has been invalidated. Um, work was done to invalidate the local cache, but if a, uh, a, a um, multi-instance cache, if a Redis cache is there, this does not cover it. Is that correct? Um, I believe if you're using the, the cache plugin that I, that NDCO has put together, okay. um, it will actually invalidate that cache okay, correctly. Good. Okay. Um, then, then either you're just doing a single instance Akapi and the cache gets invalidated, or you're using a multi-instance with the Redis plugin and that gets invalidated. Are, are both of those instances covered? Um, I, I think so. It's It's been a, a minute since I was thinking about this more okay. deeply, um, yeah. but I, I believe that is the case. Um, there, I think there's a way that we could go about solving it in a slightly more elegant way, which is by having a different cache key, um, one that uses the dids associated with the connection as opposed to um, the, I think it's the connection ID itself right now that's being used. Okay, yeah. Because um, if we use the dids as the cache key, then even after uh, new dids are applied to the connection, we would still be able to receive messages for the old dids for the duration of the cache uh, time to live. Oh, I see. 
Oh, oh, sneaky. I get that. Yeah. Um, so that, that's what I came up with at the time. I didn't change how that was behaving in, in the PR and, and that's what um, Akif inherited as well and what got merged. Um, oh, that's but, super uh, subtle. <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a month or two since I thought about that. Yeah, though, so I, I yeah. think there might be deeper things to consider. Okay. And to, to clarify a little bit on the Redis side of things, when I wrote, when I put together the Redis plugin uh, that Daniel mentioned, it, it overwrites and is subclassed off of the normal Akapai cache uh, caching system. So anything that would clear out or invalidate cache in that system should likewise do the same in the Redis system. Okay. Now, this this raises another question why I've highlighted Indicio's Reddish Cash plugin. Is that the same as the one that's in the plugins repo, or is that a different implementation? So the plugin inside of the Aries Akapai plugins repo is the um, external queuing plugin for, for Redis. Okay. So it does not include the caching mechanism. Um, so they are separate plugins, yeah. That's not good, is it? I mean, uh, one yeah. of the, <laughs> you basically receive didcom messages over Redis versus the other one where your cache is in Redis. Right. Oh, I see. Right, right, so right, they, right. They, they, they had different purposes, so they weren't combined into the same plugin, even though they're both associated with Redis. Got yeah. it. Um, there were changes made to both plugins in order to make it so you could, you know, the, a, a similar configuration was used for both. Uh, plugins so that they can be talking to the same Redis cluster and that's all coordinated neatly. Um, but um, yeah, they're currently separate plugins still. Oh man. And the, uh, the biggest thing I see there is just the confusion for, for deployers to understand what to do. Um, obviously the, <clears throat> I'll, I'll ask the question, can we get the Indicio Redis cache put into the, the uh, Akapai plugins I uh, think, repository yeah i think that would be fine okay so that would be really good to have and then the other is is rationalizing the two of them so just to be clear for others one is strictly uh this one what we're talking about is strictly for caching data amongst instances of uh, a, a multi-instance versions of akapai the other one the other plugin other Redis plugin, and there's a parallel Kafka plugin that is for um, re, uh, message queue handling. Um, so two uses of of Redis in this case, but two different for for different purposes. Um, ultimately, it does come down to this, which is something we need to think about, which is. I, I think we need to make it that all deployments of Akapai are are multi-instance automatically so that if you use it in the dege uh, degenerate case of just a single Akapai instance, well, that's okay. Um, but um, if you do use it in a multi-instance, um, it's automatically... Um, automatically takes into account the the multi-instance issues that come up with using Akapai across instances. So uh I, I you know Daniel commented, I don't know if anyone else has comments on that, but this idea that we 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 make it default that Akapai is a multi-instance aware and you don't add plugins or add things to it to make it multi-instance aware. Any any gut reactions on that? Okay. So maybe just to add a little bit of color to the uh, the usage of the cache inside of Akapai right now. Yeah. Um, I, I think where it's currently most critical is actually in the connection establishment phase uh, of things. That, that's where having uh, local caches was getting us into trouble originally. Um, and there was uh, a PR that I 
uh, submitted in a, and it's been in, in ACPI for a few versions now, I think, which basically just ignores the cache until the connection has been fully established because we're getting into the state where a different node in the cluster could receive like a completing message and then you'd have split brain in terms of like what the final state uh, or what the connection targets were across the cluster um, because it was relying on this local cache. So we, we've fixed that issue. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily strictly required now in the current state for there to be a uh, cluster-wide cache. Okay. Um, so then the other uses of the cache, um, the other places it's being used right now is for caching ledger values and caching things like JSON-LD contexts. Yeah. Um, and then of course, connection targets are, are something that are cached and we need to change how that behaves in order to support the did rotation stuff. Um, but the, the cache, um, as, uh, as it currently stands, it's, it's useful, it's valuable. Um, but we could leave it in a state right. where it's a local only thing. And I don't think we would be running into too much trouble. Um, okay. the other place I think we could start to take greater advantage of Redis would be for like, uh, a cluster wide event bus kind of a thing. Um, so if we wanted okay. to be able to have some code that ran a little bit more linearly, if that makes sense, um, we could use the the Redis um, event bus to, you know, help notify an Akpai instance that's waiting for something to take place, but the action was completed on a different node in the cluster. Um, we've got a few places where we are attempting to do that kind of a thing. Um, and we're doing it in kind of a hacky way right now um, okay. where we just kind of, we wait and see if we get it, but if we don't get it by a certain timeout, then we check the state in the database to see if it happened to have occurred on a different node. And then if it did, then we'll return. Um, but if it just doesn't occur in that time frame, then we give up and we just return an error um, back to the caller. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. That could be interesting because if I remember correctly, I think revocation calls into the event bus multiple times upon a single message. Yeah, the, the event bus is pretty widely used. It, it's also been something that's been considered a strictly local to the instance thing. Um, but um, the way we start to program around event buses, we, we expect it to be able to work in a multi-instance scenario, and that doesn't always end up being the case. So um, unless you had like sticky sessions um, for, for a DITCOM exchange, if you could ensure that the same node would be receiving the full exchange of messages for, for a given protocol, then it's less of an issue, which is something that we've done in the past with like the Kafka uh, message queuing system. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah. And Redis also has PubSub, which is similar. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the same thing can be accomplished with the Redis queuing yeah. system. Okay. Okay. So more to be so that sounds like a good issue to open that I can do, and then you can add to it, edit the the issue that I create and add to it. I'll try to capture what we talked about today in that. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, thanks. It's good. Uh, let me get back to our, that's this one, as I say, I, <clears throat> so I do have yeah. a little comment in regards to the okay. making it multi-instance by default. Yeah. If we do so, at least in the terms of like, say, uh, Redis, for instance, if we were to use Redis, yeah. um, it does kind of put a burden on uh, always having that third party service. Yes. Whereas right now it is yeah. possible, especially in like unit testing situations, to just spin up a single ACPI node without any other third party dependencies. Yes. And, 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 you know, that's obviously why we didn't start with this. But my feeling now is that any, production Akapai instance requires that. And so by not testing that and not making that default, we actually 
put a higher risk at, at production to, uh, implementations. And by just accepting the fact that any real implementation of Akapai requires all of these things, then we should do it. Now, <clears throat> having, having said all that, socket doc oh socket doc i so want to have a socket doc implementation um because a mediator is a is a huge one that where where you really want multi-instance and and without socket doc implemented we don't have that so that's a place where you know So that that's another um, separate topic, I think, which is um, you know getting a mediator that uses socket doc. It's such a cool concept and an idea, but getting it across the finish line to include it in Akapai would be helpful. Um, this one has come up before and similar, which is that Akapai doesn't wait to get all of the statuses done. So this one is a fairly straightforward. I know there's another one um, uh, Wade that you put in, which is, or, or highlight, somebody else highlighted, but Wade, I remember you commenting on it, which is the cred def fails to get to the ledger, but is put into the wallet. Um, yeah, I think so just in checking. general, it, yeah. comment about um atomic operations in general yeah um because right now i mean if you you things will happen to your wallet and may not happen to the ledger due to communication issues on all sorts of fronts so i mean one of the simplest ideas that i sort of threw out there is i mean the operations don't necessarily need to be like atomic in, in the true sense exactly. of the word, but yeah. um, at least if, you know, if you create an object in your wallet and it fails to write to the ledger, at least delete it from your wallet um, and indicate that there was a failure um, so that you're not um, in a, uh, in unsyn you know, you, yeah. you don't have synchronization issues. Yeah. Red Def is is the particular one that's the most interesting yes. because um Red Defs can't be re recreated. They're they get created randomly. Um the keys get get generated randomly. So um you can't if if something goes wrong and you get it in the wallet but not on the ledger or on the ledger, not in the wallet or, or whatever, you, you basically have to start with a new cred def. And yep. so getting it right would be um most important for this one yeah this this issue is a little bit different though because it's the cred def gets created but the revocation registry yes changed. but it's still no no good to you yeah yes oh that yeah uh, but that does explain why it happens later yeah good point well would this just be about checking if there's a tail server before conducting the yeah. operation yep yeah. yeah. So in this in this one, I think where there's a revocation involved, we just need to put a check to say is there actually a tail server, and then when, yeah. not not let them create the cred def in the first place, or not let mm -hmm. them, you know, yeah. issue a credential if they don't have the, the tail server configured. Just about checking if the variable is set, and may, maybe even checking if it's it's a real yeah. tail server, like a, if there's a way to do that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Excuse me. Is there an endpoint on a tail server that you can query just to see if it's really a tail server? Like, is there a get? I don't know. A I think so, yes. A, I don't know if it's got a status on it, though. <clears throat> you can ping it to make sure it's an actual endpoint. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, but then again, then it starts to be about implementation. Yeah. Um, this one was supposed to have have a uh, discuss on it um, more. You say we don't have to worry about this one, so this would be a help wanted. It would be nice to have if someone's um, new to um, 
help wanted good first issue type but not a high priority one um sorry i thought i had tagged more of these there was a couple more that i did want to respond to um okay i think that's enough um there's not that many more that i wanted to to cover i thought i had done about four or five but i'm not seeing them so and i think as i'm looking at these we've got most of them um so with that um that's all the topics i have for today is there any other topics people want to talk about um would like to add um i have a question it's not it, it's more related to unknown creds but might just throw it here just since we have some time on this someone else has a more like a by related topic go ahead uh so in the unknown creds rust library uh for the credential there are a function when i have a i don't care credential to map it to w3c uh, however that that doesn't exist for a presentation you can create a presentation as a w3c presentation but there's no mapping to a already created an Uncreds presentation to a w3c model and i wanted to know if there was a specific reason for this uh, before i i start to look uh uh, into it um i think the intention was that um the, the reason is because um credentials are long term um things that you have in your wallet that you may receive in one format or the other but want to use in different formats and so there was the idea of being able to convert back and forth um, yeah. The biggest thing being that you could receive a W3C credential, convert it into the other, and all the code that currently processes the the legacy format would still work. And I think that's the biggest reason. Um, with a VP, it's a one-time use generation. And so there's not, and you would only produce um, one type of presentation you're going to produce a legacy presentation or you're going to produce a W3C, but you're not going to produce both or switch between them and so on. And I think that's the reason that that was not done, that that, that was the only thing done and that the verification is there to to do either. OK, because my what I wanted to do is sort of so a holder has a credential and then you request a presentation with you know, selective disclosure. And then when you receive this presentation, map it to a W3C presentation and extract the derived credential part only, and then reissue this as a credential. Does that make sense? Reissue it as a credential. So I'm not sure of that part. So let's say I'm an issuer. Uh, I issue a credential to an entity which yep. contains some sensitive data, other not so sensitive. And I want to have oh. a public version of that credential, but only showing the public information. So I would send a presentation request, requesting the public information, and then just sign that derived credential. It might be a bit too, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a, it's a real use case there, but, uh, that's interesting. Okay. And and so when you sign that derived credential, you can't use the signature that's on it because it's got it's got a challenge associated with it and a nonce and and various other things. Yeah, or I could use both proof, you know, just add another data integrity proof that, you yeah. know, signs the whole credential uh and then also add the proof that was sent by the holder that can also be processed. I don't know. I don't know enough about uh -huh. it. <laughs> All right. So I, uh, from what I understand, I, it's worth having a look because it, there was no technical limitation. It was only because the use case for a presentation was a one-time yes. use. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Right.
Maybe I'll ask uh, the Monday. I don't know, Chris. Maybe so someone would have more insight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks all. We're at time, so we will. I'll save that. Stop sharing, and with that, we'll wrap up the meeting. Thanks for uh, coming. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.